The following video features trained veterinarian zookeeper staff working with potentially dangerous animals. Do not attempt to replicate their actions at home. Oh, hey, there you go. This video was brought to you by our generous friends at Exoterra. Our sanctuary's crocodilian collection is the cornerstone of what makes PHS so unique. Our facility is home to all but two species of crocodilian, featuring the typical residents you'd expect from a reptile zoo, like American alligators, but also including a variety of high-profile endangered crocs, like our breeding pair of Cuban crocodiles, and some record-breaking animals like Grandma, the world's oldest captive false gharial. For well over a decade, PHS has been a repository for crocodilians that were formerly pets. Through our cooperation with federal and state wildlife authorities, our sanctuary has become a trusted place for these animals to go. Hi everybody, I'm Alex, the uh, Director of Operations here at the Phoenix Herpetological Sanctuary. Today I have one of our rescued Nile crocodiles. Um, he has about what looks like a two-inch nail in his stomach. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> We're gonna take him down to uh, Eve, East Valley Emergency Vet, uh, to see if we can do an endoscopy. They may be able to pull the nail completely out from the, from the mouth. Um, so we're gonna take him down there and see what uh, the great vets at Eve can do for him. Hey, I just got here. I see a dog entrance, a cat entrance, but no crocodile entrance. <laughs> All right, sounds good, thanks, bye. I'm Dr. Thomas. I'm the veterinarian for Phoenix Herpetological Sanctuary. Today I'm here with the wonderful boarded reptile specialist, Dr. Bjornbo. Hello. We had an interesting case with one of our Nile crocodiles. This friend had eaten a nail, which was pretty unfortunate. You can see it right here. It's pretty darn big. That thing is not going to move on its own. And with it being a long, sharp object, we obviously don't want that in here. Obviously, this friend has to be under anesthesia, has to be holding still can't bite the very expensive endoscope, um, also can't bite the staff. And then the other thing is too, when reptiles are under anesthesia, um, or really any animals under anesthesia, you have to make sure that they're getting the anesthetic gas, but also air, so they're being oxygenated. So we had to do something called intubation, um, whereas when you stick a sterile tube down their airway, and then that allows you to use a machine to deliver the oxygen as well as the anesthetic gas. What we did in this uh, in this case is we actually went in with a, what's called an endoscope, which is like a long camera to go and actually grab it and pull it back out. Um, what we're going to want to do. Um, the reason is we chose to do this is one, if you have surgery and you have to live in water, you can have a lot of complications because your incision can't go into water. And we really wanted this this uh, crocodile to be able to return to a normal life as quick as possible. See if he will tolerate this scope going in. That is rinsing out. Are you watching your patient's heart rate? Oh, I'm sorry. I got this again. Dr. Thomas uses an ultrasound wand to find the crocodile's heart, which is necessary in determining if it is beating in a healthy manner. Make sure that he's tolerating the anesthesia well. Mm -hmm. so let me get you a heart rate, Stina. Okay. Um, heart rate 60. Um, okay. okay. So reptiles, um, for the most part, most species have a three-chambered heart, which is different than mammals. Um, crocodilians, however, have a four-chambered heart, which makes them pretty unique. This unique heart setup allows crocs the ability to separate oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, thanks to the extra pulmonary artery in their right ventricle. Scientists believe this adaptation allows crocs to cycle blood several times before returning it to the lungs thus conserving oxygen, which is useful for diving. As the vets delve deeper into the croc's stomach, they find something unexpected. So one complication we unfortunately ran into is recently this crocodile had actually had a meal. So when we got in there with the camera, we couldn't see the nail. So we needed to figure out how to get the meal out. First we tried to grab the meal, but unfortunately it had been too digested, and so when we tried to pull it out, it just came out in pieces. Okay, it's gonna be so fun. Okay. Open. They reinsert the endoscope, but it would appear that the rat is still too large of an obstruction to find the nail. Luckily, Bjornabo has a trick up her sleeve. 
So instead we did what's called gastric lavage, and that's when you flush the stomach with water to flush it out the mouth. So we flushed the food out. There we go. Why am I not wearing gloves? Somebody explain this problem. The nail wasn't gonna move because the nail would try to go out sideways, but we got as much of the mouse out as we could so we could see the nail better. They reinsert the endoscope for a third time. The stomach is much easier to navigate now, and soon the endoscope runs into a giant metallic object. Stop, back up, okay, don't move anybody. Oh yeah, All that right. looks like a nail so. for sure. From there, we were actually able to use a little wire lasso to grab that nail, turn it, and then pull it out of the mouth. You guys, we got it. Look at it! Again, we just want to say thank you to all the veterinarians that helped us with this, the great veterinarians at EVE, Dr. Bjornovo and Dr. Alyssa Thomas. We really appreciate it, and so does hardware. Um, not having that two-inch nail in his stomach probably feels a whole lot better. Even though we have wonderful people in the community, like Dr. Bjornovo, like EVE Hospital with Dr. Robinson and Dr. Kiefer, we are trying to grow our medical program so we can increase the level of care that we have for the 1,500 animals that call PHS home. We have a GoFundMe that is actually trying to raise money to renovate a building on site so that we can have a dedicated medical area that's bigger and better so we can continue to practice better and better medicine to help these animals out and get them back to health. A lot of times we are trying to get animals back into good shape after they unfortunately fell in hard times and became sick. Having the ability to offer good care um, is something I'm very passionate about and happy that every year we offer more and more services at the sanctuary, but it would be revolutionary for us if we had a whole medical building. So if you have the ability to donate, we would really appreciate that. Head to the link in our bio to donate to the GoFundMe now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, make sure to like it, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for more stories like these. Your support helps us care for all the animals that call PHS home. Thanks. That's enough. That's enough. You know you're a bad